doctors and nurses of Reddit would have been your why didn't you come in sooner? Moments? Had a patient brought in by her son who took care of her, when she arrived to our unit I performed a skin assessment, took off her socks and found a fallen off gangrenous toe. Seems fake and I wish this was but it was by far the nastiest thing I've witnessed. Son said he had no idea when his mother's foot became that bad. No words. Our x-ray professor told us this happened to her once too when she removed a person's sock to x-ray their foot. Hasn't happened to me yet though. When I read gangrene or diabetic foot or osteomyelitis in the medical history for any foot's rays, and the patient has socks on, I don't take the sock off. Image is just fine with the sock on. The smell usually tips you off regarding how bad it is. Also if it looks wet. I don't want to remove the socks and find out that chunks of skin is going to come off with the sock. Elu. Eid doctor here. A farmer in his 70s reluctantly came in with his wife after falling over outside while wrangling a sheep one week earlier. He did not want to be there but had been forced to come by his wife who was worried about him. On questioning examining he was pale, short of breath, and clearly in pain all over the right side of his chest but not wanting to show it. X-ray and blood showed had broken loads of ribs, punctured his lung and bled profusely into his chest and was now very anemic. I'm a resident doctor working in a heavily agricultural part of my country. I've learned to become extremely concerned whenever I see a farmer especially during harvest season, since being near death is usually the one thing that will convince them to come in. My dad broke five or six ribs and punctured a lung doing something stupid standing on the loader. He'd been thrown off and when he came to he got back on the tractor, drove home, and told my mom he needed a couple of Tylenol. Thankfully she called an ambulance instead of just handing over some pills. Props to your mom and any other farmer's wife that sees through the BS, I live in the Midwest in a small town full of farmers, am not even a doctor nor am I related to them, but I definitely see how stubborn they are. Yeah I am pretty sure it's why married men live longer than single men their wives make them go to the doctor. Story from my sill who is a nurse. Young man was brought into the ER. He had a sinus infection that he had let go to the point that it had eaten through the skull and into this brain. She was told that it had started several months before. He didn't want to go to the doctor for it. All it would have needed was 10 days of antibiotic pills. Instead, he was not brought in until he was unconscious, and died within a few hours. As someone with a history of bad sinus infections that seem to never get bad or go away quickly, this is terrifying. As someone with plenty of anxiety and random pains all over my body from back to front, this thread isn't helping me at all. As someone who just sneezed and has access to WebMD, this is terrifying. Elderly woman fell at home and broke both femurs. Son thought she just needed to rest so he carried her to her bed. She laid there in her own filth for three days before anyone called 911. The son lives with her, and Therese family next door as well. How? Why? This is one of the worst responses to this question that I've read. That poor woman. I hope she didn't have to go back to that house after being treated medically. I had a patient come in saying he couldn't see. How long had it been going on? For five days. The man had been blind for five days and didn't come in because he thought it might be like a cold or something. During the exam when I asked him to move his legs he said oh, I can't do that. I asked how long had been unable to move his legs or walk. Wife chimes in about two years. Never saw a doctor about it they just borrowed a friend's wheelchair and kept it rolling. Turned out Head had multiple strokes with multiple risk factors he never addressed. Given how little insight he appeared to have into the condition I honestly felt sorry he didn't have insurance so I'm sure that played a role in him avoiding seeing anyone. I'm sure many of these will end with they didn't have insurance good to for the treatment edit, I didn't mean for everyone to tell me stories of them or their family members suffering from lack of insurance. It's really depressing in TBH I don't think my anxiety can take reading all these stories. Maggots. Whenever it's gotten to the point of maggots it's like 100 alarm bells that this person's living situation is no bueno. Maggots in the abdominal genital skin folds of a morbidly obese woman who refused to let her daughter take her to the doctor until the smell was so bad the neighbors complained. Saddest, grossest patient issue I ever saw. And she was inpatient for weeks, with Q4 dressing changes that needed at least four people to assist. Awful for her, awful for us. Holy duck the neighbors could smell it. Jesus I gagged. Probably an apartment, rather than the house you may have pictured at first read. 
Could have been a farm out in the country. Neighbors downwind hate her. Children's nurse here. My first week in pediatric ed we had a young girl, 67, come in with a really swollen jaw face. Poor girl was unable to move her jaw without intense pain and hadn't been able to eat for several days. Turns out she had only just started cleaning her teeth for the first time ever and managed to develop several abscesses and rotten teeth in the process. To make it worse her mum told us she was recovering from the same procedures to remove most of her teeth because of almost the same thing. They didn't want to bother the GP as they thought she was just messing about to get out of school. All of a sudden I don't feel quite as terrible about the cavity my six-year-old has to get filled. That poor little girl, this breaks my heart. There are people who develop cavities much easier than others. Even with proper mouth hygiene, it still happens, no need to worry about not being good enough. There is also a huge difference between a cavity and a rotten tooth. Rotten teeth have been left uncleaned and untreated for quite a while so I think that's where parents actually should feel bad. Yep. I've always had good toothbrushing habits and still ended up with cavities almost every time I went to the dentist. Conversely I take poor care of my teeth even though my grandfather was a dentist and never had a single cavity after 30 plus years. No gum disease either. Every dentist I've seen since my grandfather stopped practicing has said the same thing good genes. Edit, fix spelling error. Once had an older lady call in wanting a prescription for pain meds because she was sure she had shingles. Said her neighbor had them and she was sure that's what it was. She had been in for an exam in almost two years, so the doctor asked that she come in to be evaluated before a prescription could be given. She refused and called again the next day asking for a prescription. This went on all week. Her calling for pain meds, the doctor asking her to come in to be seen. She finally agreed to make an appointment. It wasn't shingles. It was a skin ulceration from advanced breast cancer. Frown. My girlfriend is a care worker and she recently told me that she slipped off a patient's slippers and remarked I didn't know you had lost your toes to which the patient responded well I had until you took the slipper off dear sounds like something from a grim sketch show, God bless anyone who can do jobs like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put your slipper back on now. My dad is the one that wouldn't go in. He got a sore in the crease on the bottom of his second toe, the one next to the big toe, so it would be the piggy that stayed home, and just kept ignoring it. He would go with his wife to her nail place and have his toenails trimmed and I think that's where the infection probably got in when they soaked his feet. He blew it off for a couple of weeks until the wife made him see the doc. It's a good thing she did. The infection had gotten into the bone so they had to snip his toe off to the first knuckle to catch it before it went any further. The doc said had he waited any longer, he could have lost the entire foot. He's lucky to just have a stubby piggy and not a stubby leg. This little piggy died at home. Not a nurse a doctor but a lab scientist. Had a guy come in at the end of the day for chest pain that's been bothering him all weekend. The ed doc ordered a troponin blood test which helps rule in out heart attacks. If the test runs above 0.03, we consider that a sign for a heart attack and act accordingly. This guy's very first troponin was 21.00. 21. The highest we've ever had up till then was an 8.00. The guy should been dead ages ago, but he somehow pulled through. Don't ignore chest pains, people. Edit, just want to clarify that the hospital I work for is a tiny ass, 25 bed, rural community critical care hospital. Definitely not a place with dedicated cardiologists, cath lab, bedside assays, or even a big test menu, period. Bare basics. And the guy did, somehow, end up surviving. So, what is troponin? You know, for those of us who aren't lab scientists. Troponin is a type of protein the heart releases into the bloodstream when it's injured. The more troponin swimming about, the worse your heart is doing, and it's one of the key tests for heart attack patients. If your troponin is high, your heart is seriously ducked up. I've seen a few over the years, and they generally fall into the category of if it's not diagnosed then I can't have it, or I didn't think it was that bad. As a medical student I remember an older lady that had a breast that was necrotic and falling off. It had been progressing over the last several years. But, if she didn't get diagnosed with breast cancer, then she couldn't have it. In the other category I've seen a few cases of Fournier's gangrene. Pretty much obese, male diabetics that had a pimple sore that started in the pubic region. By the time they come to the hospital it's a raging infection where the treatment is basically to cut away everything in the pubic groin region down to the muscle layer. That little sore didn't seem like much at first. 
I lost an elderly friend to that mindset many years ago. Despite six of her seven siblings having died from some kind of reproductive genital cancer, she never had a smear test, and ignored a pain that started in her womb region and spread out to her lower back, she just tell us she had sciatica. It wasn't until the cervical cancer was literally growing out of her, that she admitted something was wrong. After the diagnosis, she just gave up completely, refused to eat, it was over in a couple of weeks after that. She was an exceptionally stubborn woman.